Welcome back to a new episode of Ricker and Bond. It's a good one. We are talking about AI Apple bubbles. Losing. We're talking about Meta. Apple is Apple losing and uh, cool loans. Really love loans, and it's all good stuff. It's Ricker and Bond. Listen up. It's live on a Friday or any day you're listening. It's Ricker. It's Bond on K Jazz ninety eight point three FM. The best place to hear reggaeton in <laughs> LA. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, I, I I think I, you know, Ricker and Bond, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, we kibitz. <laughs> to use a Jewish word I've never used besides my family. Uh, we freaking shoot in the... Give, <laughs> to... Well, sorry, dude. Need a culture <laughs> uh, uh, 10 minutes, we, we catch up. My top four music, musicians, Bonobo, The Alchemist, Weekend, and I forgot the other one. Top four of all time or top four right now? Of me, you know, we could say all time, but just as as I as I uh, am right now. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Ninth Wonder. So th- <laughs> three instrumental productionists and then a toxic man that talks about pharmaceutical drugs and cheating on spouses. Who is overdue for an album, <laughs> by the <laughs> way. I don't know. He dropped like... Legit two, over He's, two no, years ago. No, he dropped Plutoski. Mixed. Oh, oh, you're talking about future. <laughs> They're yeah. talking about Abel. Oh no, yeah, weekend, weekend was third ski. Yeah, uh, he's getting. He's you know, well, one of the the weekend corner. He's doing a bunch of concerts and not a lot of music in my ears. Not a lot of dropping. Um, the fuck. That's. But that's neither it, here nor there. Catch us next week on the weekend pod episode three twenty seven. 327 we talk about the same thing because it's just been concerts and pretty much the same thing he's not dropping i'm trying to drop and i'm trying to drop it low uh, much appreciation to remember uh the t-boy robin hood podcast robin hood snacks boys over there yeah they give you a shout out well i stole their video to post on ricker and bond and tagged them and they're like hey thanks for the shout out i said no problem friends Thank- Thanks for the free content, bitches. This <laughs> classic Ricker and Bond, you uh, steal content, maybe attribute to the creator, maybe not. It's the internet. Welcome to it. Maybe you get blockchain in there. Uh, you go viral. You pump up about ten to 20,000 followers, and then it's a slow drip from there until the next one, but maybe you get 1% of people that listen and enjoy the clips on Instagram and YouTube. That's yeah, right. Ricker yeah. and Bond on YouTube. It's like cold email. <laughs> no cold emails. You can send us an email, maybe. Maybe I am uh, whipping up a nice little John David Ricker.com beehive newsletter for my, my writings. So oh, wow. keep on the lookout for that, friends. But let's oh, get wow. to the nitty yes. gritty. The Clippers, dude. Lost it in <laughs> overtime. Disgusting. The Golden State Disgusting. Warriors lost. A Hall of Famer and Clay Thompson and our got another Bahamian man in Buddy Heald and are going to the championships, dude. Golden State Warriors for life, but it's always going to it. the playoffs, dude. What? Do you, it's like, do they even want it? They got that beautiful stadium, which is beautiful, by the way. I went. You, you went. Brag. Brag. Yeah. It was great. Um, yeah. Amazing. Jumbotron looked beautiful. Very SoFi. It wasn't. Figured out. Very. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like a mini SoFi. Yeah. Uh, Fucking never had to reach in your pocket for money or ID or ticket. You just walk in with the face recognition. Kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. What? Little you little... have to wait a lot. How does that? Hold on, hold on. Okay, <laughs> rewind. All right. So <laughs> into its stadium. In. Into its stadium. Yeah, you can opt in. But like, you know, here's the thing. We all know it was made by Steve Ballmer. Fifth or sixth richest guy in the world. Has a lot of money. Net worth of like 200 and something billion. The stadium cost $2 billion, so a pocket change to him. Microsoft guy, so you're like, okay, this is going to be a high-tech stadium. First piece of high-tech, to get your ticket, you have to go on the Intuit Dome app. Intuit Dome app. And you have the choice to register what's called your Game Face ID, where they take a picture of your face, and they register it in their database. And that's basically your ticket and your money and your fucking id in the stadium so you literally just walk in like literally you just walk in right you want food you fucking grab it off the shelf 
There's no outside vendors, no Taco Bell, no Blaze Pizza. It's just like Intuit Dome food. It's okay. Some of it's really good. Some of it's really bad. But it's like, well, you just grab it and you just leave. Alcohol. You just walk up. Like you, they, you scan your face. To like they make sure you're 21. They let you in the gate. You walk up. You grab the alcohol from the bartender or you tell them what you want. And you leave. When you leave the store, Intuit Dome charged you 30 something dollars to your Apple wallet or whatever. Wow. It's it's very one cool thing I saw about Apple Wallet, which I didn't see implemented before, which was at first I didn't have my ID. I mean I didn't have my ID or my card in my app, right? And if you don't, they make it very difficult for you. They they're like, you should put your shit in the app it's really <laughs> faster. Like people are behind you, they're like, yo, what the fuck's taking this guy so long? <laughs> so anyway, the first time I went to the bar, I didn't have my thing in the app. So I scanned my Apple Pay, my phone, onto this thing. And it said, okay, go on in. And then I fucking went in and got the beer, yada, yada, yada. And then, like, it didn't charge me until, like, I got the beer that I got or whatever. But, yeah. If you look up, there's cameras everywhere just, like, tracking you. Just getting that sweet, sweet data to fucking sell it to China or whatever the fuck. Probably but, into it, right? Yeah, but Intuit doesn't own the stadium. What is Intuit? Oh, they're a software company, it's right? In financial services company, it might just be naming rights, but I would, I would maybe yeah. try to sell it to them. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Microsoft is getting it. Uh, who fucking knows? But there wasn't. So the stadium was like I would say like sixty, maybe sixty percent full, sixty five percent full. So on like a game where it's like crowded, I would really like to see how like efficient this is because um. I don't know, you know, there were like bugs and shit, but they into it don't train their employees really well to like literally just be like stay calm, be cool, be like, oh, don't worry, we got this. And then they fucking just like override it like it's nothing. They're like, you should really put your shit in the app, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, um into it don't was chill. What was I gonna what else was I gonna say? Oh, so to register your face, it took a long time to load. It took like 30 seconds. I was like, okay, this is going to be fucking a horrible experience because like registering your face takes a long time. But the speed at which when you like used your face to like do shit, like go into the bar or like fucking get food or whatever, the speed at which it was like, hello, Jonathan, was like instant. And I was really surprised because it has to look through a huge database of faces, you know, to fucking find mine. So... I was like, okay, this is really smooth and it's only going to get better, but it's still kind of creepy. Still kind of creepy. Definitely but, a lot of data collection of faces. Super. I'd love to know the providers of that on the back end into it. Dome deep dive next episode. If you're not into, if you're not into like your phone like that, like if you're like 65 or 70, I feel like you're going to have a hard time with this. Ah, yeah. That's so interesting to see no box office anywhere like no one was like taking tickets like no like the, box office. the least technical thing there was scanning your ticket on your phone the most technical thing there was just walking in you can't buy any tickets if you walk up to the stadium well i didn't look that hard but okay. i was like looking, I was looking around i was like dude this is like fucking amazon go of yeah sports and i'm sure there's other stadiums in america like this but this is the first time I've ever, I've ever experienced it. SoFi doesn't do that. Well, they, I mean, they were building what, 2022 20, ish, 23 ish? SoFi? Yeah, SoFi's not that old. Um, Developing the in, in infrastructure of it all. But yeah, this is fucking, this makes. It's across the street from it? It's like right oh. next to it. Like. Oh, Inglewood didn't freaking flex on me. Why don't you, Inglewood? Yeah, this is. um. This makes the crypto.com arena look like a, a cave. Well, it is stable. Like, That's interesting. Like the Coliseum in Rome. Like so fucking old. Or like the Coliseum in Oakland. Uh, uh, or the Coliseum in LA. Yeah, that too. It'll be interesting to see the next generation of all those like old stadiums having to be taken down like like the Oakland Coliseum. Uh huh. I don't know if they're taking that down, but as everything gets better and better, it's going to look worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Go boats. Clippers. They won that game. They blew it out. But then oh, oh, last yeah. night they lost. <laughs> Pathetic. I don't know. Fucking. I'll see the first game. I'm not, I'm not going to watch 82 games. 
basketball. I'll see you in the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fake fans over here. Just You're watching 82 games of Clifford basketball? Oh, bro, at the you very least, I'm on the, on the Microsoft. No, I, that's, <laughs> you think I need that, bro? I got fucking um, active notifications on my phone. Sure, I mean, shows. We, all, we all see it at the top of our phone. I yeah. mean, this is in 2009. No, I'm not going to fucking watch every <laughs> game. I got a fucking wife and five kids. Like, God damn it. I, I'm sure that most people with a wife and two kids are, are watching games at night for two hours. It's my only escape. My only thing about this is um, NBA. Why are the games so fucking early? Seven thirty. They're kind of early. Seven thirty is early. I feel like if you like get off at five, you uh, barely have time to like. I mean, that's also. I mean, it was Clippers versus Suns. That's a little yeah, early. and like I think the Lakers played last night at seven. It's like yo. It was fuck? also maybe it's just for the opening day, but. Primetime NBA opening day has to be a little bit okay for East Coast. I thought they used to start at 8. I'm sure they start later. Just a quick, there's an NHL thing they do, I think, at the beginning of the NHL season, which is hockey, National Hockey League, called the Frozen Frenzy, and every team plays in one night, and ESPN 2 shows them all. Pretty sick coverage of a sport. ESPN needs that win. They're struggling right that, now. That, plus Pat McAfee, not he's... He's polarizing, which is probably good, but I love Pat McAfee, dude. You don't know. Who the F is that? All right, <laughs> All right dude. Open it. I like off the Apple. <laughs> uh, On to the news. <laughs> is the AI bubble bigger than the dot com bubble bond gen? Um, well, I wasn't like really sentient for the dot com bubble, but <laughs> it was, I'm... It was funny. There's two things on the docket here, which is like the new version of 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 like uh, tiered loans, and then a new bubble, probably probably the biggest bubble because it's the biggest technology. LOL, crypto. Uh, but yeah, it, <laughs> this is this is what thirty year olds in two thousand and two thousand eight were like. Hey, dude, eh, this time, but you know, history is cyclical. Is the 2024 AI bubble bigger than the 2000 dot com bubble? Um, great question. Perhaps right? per I, I don't know. <laughs> like, so there's an opinion piece from Jeffrey Funk, sick name, and Gary Smith on Market Watch. Um, some of their arguments were that the revenue that AI makes is a lot lower. Uh, they said the internet made 1.5 trillion in, in 2000, adjusted for 2024 dollars, and generative AI is making less than 10 billion. Um, which is question, a, though. an okay argument. What's the question? So, like, are they counting? Like, like they're right. Like AI products don't make any money, like barely. But is it? It's kind of hard to account for the money. Or the extra money being made because of AI or with the help of AI, you know? Sure. Like, like GDP like, from AI. Yeah, like how much extra value or how much like how much more output per input mm. is like being created just like with the help of AI. Because I like you know, AI is like far from like human level, but you know, it's helpful. It's like uh, you have a three year old helping you. That was like, also one of my get-ups was that, let's say in 2000, internet generated, however they get this number, 1.5 trillion. Uh, that's also like 20 to 30 years of pretty primitive internet use and like consumer got in the 2000s. Uh, it's somewhat, maybe we're a little bit earlier than the comparison of 2000 and internet to this is the same parallel as AI in 2024. Yeah. It was crazy because I started getting like knowing like what the internet like was and what it could do in like 2007, I want to say, is when I started like using it myself. And when I'm like reading books about the dot com bubble and they're talking about all the shit that happened in 2000, 2001, I'm like, dude, that was like way less time between then and 2007 than 2007 and now, you mm -hmm. know? Like, and I was like in fifth, sixth grade, like in 2007, like, yeah, that's crazy. Well, it was, I mean, it's probably just stock market stuff. 
so much time has passed. So Is that what you're saying? I mean, like a big bubble happens and then you're still using the product or just time? No, I'm just, I'm just saying like, like, I thought that I was so far removed, like as a person from the dot com bubble. But when I started using the internet and like companies actually started making money, yeah, like that wasn't like I was like in it, even though I wasn't an adult. Yeah. yeah. But it's a little different. You didn't exactly know that pets.com was blowing up in 2000. I was too busy on Nickelodeon.com playing SpongeBob Flash games. I did uh, some Flash games. I was more of a CD man. Uh, the car, the blue car, and backyard sp sport, which is back now. Maybe public. Uh, 134 million PCs were sold in 2000, generating around $684 billion in revenue. Internet services added $850 billion just for inflation. Um, OpenAI anticipates $5 billion in losses. Trading models cost up to $100 billion, million rather. Uh, trading models can cost up to 100 million. Um, OpenAI secured 6.6 .6 billion funding, and right now getting losses. But you know, Amazon had a lot of losses. I had a request from a fan to talk about Amazon at the top here. It's not exactly the top, but uh, this person tried to make a a as a consumer a, a purchase at a small business store for a doggy treat, and the Small business store was out, and this person walked out, got in the car, went to Amazon, ordered the same thing, and it was on the doorstep in less than three hours. Dude, Amazon is like fucking. Have you seen Alex from Mosey's like value equation? Like Amazon fits that perfectly. Oh, does it make value? <laughs> it's just like what i don't want to fuck it up but like what makes something valuable it's like like the likelihood of achievement the time spent the fucking um dream, was, dream outcome yeah here it is right here dream outcome J jamie um, pull this up <laughs> see that's what i'm saying dude if you get a nice little chat bot zoom it will, everybody that's very doable it. okay yeah dream outcome so like okay i want a fucking i just bought a camera on amazon okay i want a camera all right perceived likelihood of achievement if i get it on amazon they're probably almost 100 percent gonna have it if i go to the store there's a chance they might be out right okay time delay if i go to the store i could get it today if i get it on amazon i'll probably gonna get i'm probably gonna get it tomorrow worst case three days effort and sacrifice um the effort it takes for me to pull up my phone and order a camera with a few clicks is worth way more than me getting in the car and driving an hour in LA traffic to go to the camera store mm. when they might not even have it. Mm. So Amazon is very valuable. Um, even, even if, plus it's fucking free shipping. Like even if I had to pay $20 for shipping, it would still be more valuable to me because it would take me two hours to get to and from the camera store. And I'm making more than $20 an hour. So Fuck yeah, I'm going to go Amazon. Sorry for that little rant. Value. Yeah, I mean, even simpler than that, if you uh, simplify and make someone's desires easier, they will be more likely to pay you. Dude, Amazon's so fucking good. Dude. <laughs> the, the CEO is right. All of you fuckers should go back to work. Back to the office. <laughs> Andy Jassy is correct. There was a... Uh, a, a quote which is also relating to ai um of one of the stats that stood out to mr bezos after he was leaving his cushy 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 wall street job and uh internet usage was growing uh he said when i came across the fact that the web usage was growing at 2300 percent per year i decided to find a way to build a business around that that's how the idea of amazon was born uh, how much is AI growing per year? I think there might have to be different statistics on how you grow it. Uh, yeah. Or like maybe. AI businesses. Like, I mean, I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, you could see. Because I think in terms of web usage was growing at 2,300% per year. Is that people using it? 
Um, or is that people just using the phone? <laughs> oh, wait, no, it was the other way around. Forget well, I said that. The internet. Um, where now, I guess a slice, either this is completely overshadowed by that percentage or it's a an analogous stat of the infancy of AI, of people taking away search market share from Google and using ChatGPT. Um, but it's probably just a lot more enterprise. I guess the internet was too, but I mean, plugging in on the back end of a bunch of people's companies. Does, I guess that doesn't make, no, I guess I answered my own question. I was going to ask, so does like a company, does NVIDIA selling chips to Meta, does that count as AI revenue? Is that does that count as profit, or is that just like an illusion in like the growing or the the demand air quotes of AI chips because people are foreseeing demand for AI in the future, where at the moment it seems like the only usage for AI besides Chat GPT in video games is AI girlfriends, yeah, yeah. And, and coding too, but that's like. It's all right. It's getting there. We'll probably have to parse out exactly what the uh, the uh, parallels are, but it's certainly uh, I don't know. It's probably not two thousand percent per year. Also, hasn't been a year. That fucking idea you had about podcasting or whatever AI. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's really fucking good. I'm just thinking about how how that could be made like right now. Like you'd probably just have to have like dictation on for the entire podcast. And it's just like, yeah. Looking that for you too, to like, say, that's why I say would... AI might be more primitive, primitive uh, to a comparison than internet in 2000. Although 2000 internet was pretty primitive. You probably couldn't have a video call like zoom in 2000. Uh, and people were just making browser web-based stuff. Um, but like, and this is why I think Apple will eventually be better because they'll make the best AI assistant. And if not the best, the most hands will be on it. Yeah, uh, I, I I disagree with the best because they've had 15 years to make Siri the best and it's the same as They're it always was. slow. <laughs> <laughs> This is beyond slow. There's no <laughs> no reason why fucking the HTC should have a better personal assistant than Apple. It is true. I uh, it, I can talk to an Alexa. Sorry to say this, Siri, in the background, but uh, pretty pretty better than I can talk to Siri. Yeah, Siri should have been, dude. If Siri had done this in like 2020, right? Like if they had just like if they had not even released ChatGPT. But they just like slid in its capability into Siri, like just slightly, and they didn't even tell anyone it was AI. Like now they have to tell everyone it's AI, yeah, because they don't want to be the company that doesn't have AI in their phone. You know, yeah. a lot of slip ups it seems lately, and everything. The sentiments always like for the past few months is Apple is slipping up. Like Tim, we forgive you because the stock <laughs> is looking sexy, which is I've... interesting. But everyone's like, oh, there is a. I'll, I'll get the the newspaper clip, but there's a, a newspaper clip of an analyst, and uh, he was kind of poo pooing on him. He's like, "Why would we?" I'll, I'll get it, but what were you gonna say? Um. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like yeah, like low key. Why is Apple doing so well when iPhone sales are slipping? Apple TV is about to be cut off from production, or Apple TV originals. Um. Maybe. Fucking, they're stopping production of the apple vision pro um um probably in favor of a, a a cheaper model but who knows they stopped they didn't go through with their plans for a car they i don't know you know just a, a lot of a lot of shit a lot of shit one of the main things that people have been saying is that they're not very innovative as of now as they might have looked in the past but when you say all those things it does show a, a foot forward of trying to make some new products and offerings for consumers yeah i think well i mean they did have their wins i mean I, you could argue that the apple watch is successful um 
AirPods are extremely successful. AirPods could be its own company. Yeah. Um, their services are doing well. Like it's subscription a little bit services. of what have you done for me lately, as is the stock market game. But yes, correct. But uh, this this uh, this man in the newspaper said, the reason we've been trimming Apple is that while it has a tremendous amount of cash, which it does, the growth isn't there. It has been overly reliant on the product refresh cycle. We don't like the valuation at 31 times earnings for basically flat growth when we can get, say, 10% growth in Alphabet paying 20 times earnings. Talk about a burn. Yeah. Um, or even basically fucking... flat growth, bro. Those are fighting words. Or even meta, low key. Yeah. Like, hate to play that card, but meta has been doing a good job in the products department. Um, yeah. The meta quest is good. So when you sent me that Apple Vision Pro, I was like surprised, but not surprised because. First, okay, first of all, I got the fucking cheap one, the three hundred dollar one, and I was like, dude, like the whole time I'm using it, I'm like, this is like way worse than Vision Pro, obviously, but it was three hundred bucks, you know, like how, so. How is it worse? Um, My Vision Pros. Yes. Okay. So the pass through is way worse. Like when you look in the Vision Pro, it's almost as if you're like not looking at a screen, even though you are. Um, so the pass through is like when you like put the headset on and you see the outside world because you're really yeah. just looking at a screen like a camera. Can you flick that off though? Yeah, when you go into VR mode, okay, it it turns it off. But the pass through is what makes it look like things are like floating in the air. Yeah. So I think what makes the Vision Pro or one of the reasons why the Vision Pro is more expensive than the Quest is because um, Vision Pro is eye tracking, so you literally just look at something and it's selected. And then you do this with your fingers and then you like click to open it. Mm -hmm. um, Vision Pro doesn't have that. It has hand tracking where it can fucking track your hands. That's like hit or miss. It's like, it's pretty okay, but it's definitely no Vision Pro. But it also has hand controllers, which are like pretty fucking solid, but they're hand controllers at the end of the day. And it's also the whole thing is plastic. It's not glass and aluminum and yeah, beautiful, but it's super light. It's not like uncomfortable. You could buy 10 of them and put them in a classroom for like the price of one Vision Pro almost. Yeah. Although Vision Pros are selling like hotcakes on Facebook Market for like $2,000. So, oh, really? yeah. So maybe like after a few months, I might go down lower. Um, maybe like 1500 I might grab one. But, for Vision Pro? Yeah. Like they're, they're fucking dropping and it came out in what, January? Yeah. That's never a good, uh, great sign. Not great. Um, but yeah, and another thing too, like where I think Zuck has Mark beat. Zuck I'm has sorry. Tim. Zuck has Tim beat is like if you go into like their proprietary metaverse world called Horizon Worlds, you can already yeah. tell there's like a lot of users, you know, like people that have been in this for like at least a while. It's so like that since was, the Oculus. Yeah, that was the VR craze of, of like meta was kind of the first VR consumer craze. Yeah, and I, I see on Reddit and shit that people are like, I love my Vision Pro, but there's just nothing to do because, you know, like no one has one because they're it's expensive. Killer app problem. Yeah, and no one wants to develop apps because they're fucking expensive to make for Vision Pro. And no one has a Vision Pro, so you're not going to make any money. I'd make an app. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's always like the sentiment of VR app making. As like the new iPhone app making. If you were going to make an, a VR app, I would make a Quest app. Mm. Because it's literally like a... It's an Android phone with Meta software on top of it. Punch after punch, man. Mark getting yeah. his jabs in. He's saying, screw the click you claim. Whoops. He's bumping Tupac. And he's right throwing here. his stuff, dude. Also, I was, I was talking about the pass-through stuff because... Especially with the headset, are are people really like majority of the time trying to walk around with it on? Eh. I do. Like in my house. So I got the cheap one for three hundred bucks and it was like a hundred gigabyte storage. And I was like, dude, for two hundred dollars more, I get better pass through and five hundred gigabytes of storage. So I returned the cheap one and I got this one. And ah. Let's see this pass through is like actually usable like i can read a little bit like 
another one I couldn't read. See, that's the uh, probably a better pricing strategy of have a, a low bad tier and then a better I mean iPhone did it. <laughs> it's just it's just bad for mixed reality. Like the VR is solid sure. on the other one. And that's what I was saying, Art, like you say you're walking around, but I I wanna I want, I just want a book, dude. I wanna, you know, but old fogey over uh, here. Huh? Old <laughs> Old I've been you. beating down the door of good book AR technology, mix, mixed reality technology for a few years now. I'm sure they have it in the MetaQuest store. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I want glasses or a oh. cool a kind of Kindle glass thing. Also, just paper that's actually paper that can be anything. But I just want... And like... They all have primitive products of this, I'm sure, if I keep looking. But I just want sick glasses. I can underline something, look it up, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, the best version of that, like, six years from now instead of a clunky headset. No, oh, Meta's probably going to be the one to make that. Maybe. Same I mean, Apple is. probably will. But we'll see. I mean, they already have Orion, which is pretty. I don't know what that is. Oh, it was the the chunky ass glasses that mark zuckerberg unveiled i do know it so you know in five years he knows what what those will be google face planted with the glasses so that zuck and tin can run tim or two. Going on, tim's been going on a little pr run i've been seeing to distract the people journal for real i thought he looks a little skittish not to be a nerd but you know once you see like, pr going on like i'm about to retire yeah. and the vision pro flops Oh, dude, the drop it would take uh, off of a reaction to that. I'm sure it would it would rumor throughout every Wall Street rumor, but my goodness. I bet if he just said, you know what? We yeah. fucked up with the Vision Pro. Yeah. My bad. The yeah. stock would go up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this thing, really bad. We get it. You hey. know, we're working hard. Hey, yeah. No, it was that's two billion dollars in research and development, whatever. Like was it? But yeah, it was about that. I think it was an insurance policy, just in case Zuckerberg was right about the metaverse. And He's... it seems he overplayed his hand a little bit. Yeah, he got crypto y with it. it, it yeah, it was a little. It was a, I don't know. It's like an it's expensive chess piece. It's an incredible point. product, but it was just a little bit too much. Has that ever happened with an Apple product before? Before the return of Steve Jobs. I don't know. Tim. Um, Tim is kind of my Apple, but I guess yeah. HomePod, maybe. Long term, I'm using it. But like that wasn't supposed oh. to be a mass market product, and now Tim Cook is saying, "Oh, this isn't a mass market product. This is just for some people." And he's right, but I mean, the partnership I had a whole they last have with credit cards, Chase and, and Apple hooking up, so you can cop some HomePods with points. Good partnership. That's cool. I've been outfitting my rooms because Chase points in the HomePod. Yeah, are you talking about the regular HomePod or the Mini? Just Mini. The Mini's a good one. Yeah, I don't need it. It's that. only 99 bucks too. That's like a couple purchases with a credit card. Damn. You know, yeah, Damn. I'd, buy, I'd be buying a lot of Clippers tickets. Just kidding, dude. Clippers, so. Oh, shit. Oh, you're not a real fan, so I don't... Warriors. <laughs> Hey, also, but fuck the love Warriors. Love the San Diego Clippers, dude. And it's real fun to say go boats, dude. Go boats. I was yelling go boats, and people were looking at me. <laughs> you like, what the fuck? You'll know. So like, You'll know, dude. You'll know. You'll know, dude. Go oh, boats. I was looking at you like, oh, I got you, bro. Oh, you got to put go boats on a shirt. like, oh, And then oh, I just got to get on the, the Jumbotron just <laughs> once, and then people will know. You got to go at the wall. How is the wall experience? The wall. Was, the, uh, the college okay. atmosphere of the wall. It was kind of weak it they're was... all paid actors they're for sure all like back are they really i would only assume dude because i was like dude no, no way one, clippers no have this many a, fans no no one's a rabid clipper like like soccer you got it basketball it's just it's somehow not that in america if you go to like serbia bro they're they're ultras they have ultras for every sport which is like their rabid fan bases in except Waterfalo. for clipper daryl Clipper, is, is the, is, Clipper Daryl is there. 
Yeah. Oh, man, it's changed so much from when I was a kid. <laughs> the cheerleaders aren't cheerleaders. They're just people Dancers. of both genders in fucking sweatpants and switch. They're like, dressed like Drake. And I'm just <laughs> like, yo, what happened to the pretty lady dancers that used to be here? What happened to the Clippers girls? And they replaced them with fucking the fucking study group from, from fucking Harvard. They don't studying. dance. The, they dance, but they're not great to look at. Uh, yeah. I see. Cool. Damn. Clipper Daryl. Championship. Easy for Warriors. He's been Easy. around, bro. I'll talk to you whenever they have the championships. And then one more meta thing. Uh, they do have a new global head of marketing for both <laughs> for both meta and threads. And his name is Jake O'Leary. Jake, come on in. Just... Who TF uses threads? Do you use threads? Uh, well, Rick and Bond does a little bit because of the integration with Instagram. Uh, I am now pretty much like not anti, but I'm pretty over X and oh, gross. I said it and that Whoa. clock the time, clock the time, how much it time it took for me to say X subconsciously Whoa. before Twitter market a over a year, a little over a year. All righty. Good to know. Uh, I'm, I don't use it a lot and I, I just, it's unappealing to me to get on it anymore. I would, Rather try to make, I I like using LinkedIn. I'll probably freaking post on Blue Sky more than I do Twitter, which is not a lot. Uh, but Blue Sky, the Blue fuck, Sky. <laughs> Dorsey's Dorsey's Twitter. Ew, make your own <laughs> algo. Uh, threads. If it gives me engagement, would uh, I'd hit it for the dopamine of it all and the engagement of it all, but not really hitting me and it's not a pleasure to use linkedin yeah. i love using i love posting on linkedin I, I i just use it to like it's like a resume i hate posting on linkedin oh i like it. when i log in i'm like i hope i don't have any notifications <laughs> i hope no one like looked at my page oh i'm <laughs> into that like something my joints dude um were, were you opposed to putting ricker and bond clips on linkedin no oh, Maybe like you clips. I don't know if you had a uh, disgruntle with that. Like me putting on clips of us. No, on my LinkedIn. Just me, me posting like if it's a clip of you. I don't know if you wanted to be like less public on LinkedIn or something. Oh no, nah, I guess it's fine. Behind baseball, good old munch that I use for clipping definitely uh, denigrates the video quality. This nice three sixty seven twenty zoom quality yeah it takes it down to like 50 yeah about 22 <laughs> yeah it's pretty bad yes quite I think maybe because the zoom in but idk uh but it spits out and all these other services are a little bit more expensive and don't offer more minutes not that i'm cutting dollars but that's a thing uh new meta global head of marketing on instagram and threads probably I will want to see on threads if they can completely outdo Twitter that has even pre Musk been horrid as a company from making money on what was and might be the most popular social media. But the memes though on Twitter, great memes. Great. Yeah. They're they just can't beat the content. Even though half of it's bots, it's like and porn. Just bring it over yeah, to LinkedIn, dude. Bring the memes over. I don't think they will. I don't. I don't know if that's the right setting. I have a whole theory for semi shit posting, <laughs> but at least posting like you would as non a non stuffy suit on LinkedIn. I believe it's uh, good to have some human soul in your posts if you're not a little bitch. Yeah, that's right. That one's going on LinkedIn, dude. Gary V can cuss, so can I. <laughs> I have no soul. Uh, untrue. Um. Let me talk to you about bonds, Bond Jen. Let's, let's hear it. Back in 2000, there was a bubble. Back in 2008, there was a bubble. Back in like 13 or 14, there was something that happened. 2020, there was a pandemic. What happened with 2008 was some loan stuff. They uh, tried to tranche some loans, which was 
making loans, bundling them together, and then selling the bundles to people. And people would get like an interest, I believe, on these bundles. And Goldman Sachs, your boys. Are, My boys. Your boys at Ulrich Goldman are bundling what uh, is called capital call loans. And I'm pretty sure most people that have anything to do with any type of finance already know this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to the people that don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Uh, basically, bank gives loan to private equity or private debt or private, private equity or private debt company. Mm-hmm. EE uses that loan to buy assets, buy a company, buy real estate. Wait, wait, back up. Yeah. Okay. Bank, bank sells consumer loans to private equity. Or it's not it... a consumer loan anymore, but yes. Okay. So like credit card debt, mortgage shit. Okay. They sell it to private equity. No. They're not selling consumer stuff to private equity. They're, They're giving not. private equity a loan. That's interesting. Instead of giving a giving... loan to a consumer, they're giving a loan oh. to enterprise. Oh, okay. So the private equity firm is taking out a loan from the bank. Correct. Okay. The banks tried this with consumers and it didn't go well. Okay. And then what? Money. Bank. Loan to private equity. Private equity uses loan to buy asset. They get money from investors to pay back the loan. Private equity goes to uh, actually goes to what is called a, a an SPV, which is a something I forget the name of. Yeah, Special purpose vehicle. Um, so they make loans. Uh, private equity gets money from investors. They're they're calling cash. They're calling cash from their investors. Uh, that's why it's called a obviously a capital call loan bank private equity private equity buys asset private equity gets money from investors their limited partners pays back to the bank that's one loan they take a bunch of those loans pool it together and make a uh make an asset backed bond asb abs who, AA, uh, who buys that um pension consumer. <laughs> no well they're kind of trying uh, the people who buy the pooled together loans, uh, which is securitized, are usually pensions or insurance firms. Oh, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, oh, so everyone's retirement. <laughs> yes, precisely. Uh, ABS asset backed uh, secured, secured securities, probably. Um, so bank, private equity, private equity pays back because <laughs> they're getting money from investors. <laughs> uh, who's investing in private equity? Uh, now more than ever consumers are, uh, there's back in the day right a few months from 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 now in the past uh, a young man named john david ricker was like hey there's a lot of private credit headlines happening right now more than i've ever seen in my life uh and i went on a discord and i was kind of making a joke and i was like i this is you know it's bad when i'm talking about it because like i'm you know king of retail and all that uh and he was like, dude, how do you become the every Wall Street's favorite jackass? And I took that personally like Michael Jordan, dude. Um, anyways, uh, bank, private equity. Uh, pool it, pool the loans into a SPV, SVP, SPV special purpose vehicle. Um, people buy it, pension funds, insurance companies, hedge funds. Uh, anybody try to make a return? Uh, Blackstone, perhaps. Um, and then you get rated just like other bonds. Some bonds suck. Some bonds are good. Might be uh, ringing some bells, little big short type deal. Uh, if, uh, the worst rated bonds in the tranche default, then, uh, you take a loss on it a little bit, but apparently Goldman says that the, uh, percentage of defaults on these, uh, credit call loans are close to zero. Uh, but that's what's going on, and everyone's like, "Yeah, this kind of sounds like stuff in the past." Um, they also do something called synthetic risk transfers, which uh, there's something with regulation where they have to like keep a certain amount of capital either off their books or on their books, but also putting it into a special uh, purpose vehicle and these uh, synthetic risk transfers. 
takes it off their books and then somehow it's okay with the regulators uh, and then gives the risk to other people. Pretty fun. The default is close to zero. Uh, Goldman says the defaults on the credit call loans, which is the loans inside of the, the bond pools, are close to 0% uh, risk of defaulting, which seems almost impossible, but I don't know. Interesting. Private equity firms have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. Um, synthetic risk transfers... Investors buy people's risks, get returned from that. Um, yeah, fun stuff. Who's going to pay for all this? <laughs> well, we I was are. thinking about the margins for all that, too. I was like, do you really get that good of margins of a bunch of just flow of, like, debt, which is kind of private equity's whole thing? But uh, this is also, by the way, like, all this information I got is from a, an author on the Wall Street Journal called Matt Weirs, who had a a few articles over the past few months talking about it. So much appreciation to him. Thank you, man. Or Tim, probably. Um, unless you're, I don't know, if you're trans, then just let me know, dude. I'll uh, call you what you want to call you, except my mother, because you're not my mother. All right. For now. <laughs> For now, dude. Unless something weird happens, like you marry my mom and then uh, transition and then you. I guess be my mom, like you Kardashian style. I marry your mom. Well, I mean, we have been talking. <laughs> not you, dude. I was talking uh, to Matt, not you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude. Matt, Matt, Matt oh, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, banks, banks are doing some some uh, little slicey dicey with loans like they did back in the day because consumer loans that they tried didn't work and everyone's like hey are you guys sure this is all good and then the banks are like yeah dude it's all good don't worry this is all big boy stuff private equity you know moody's so you mean i can just take out a loan and ask and raise money to pay it off (laughs) (laughs) i just say company failed they get a big ass loan and then you get it well you got to raise invest you raise money from investors but Fuck. Uh, yeah. Let's, oh, let's do it. Yeah, let's F it. Oh, right yeah. Um, at least I mean, real estate seems. I mean, he might got some some crunch on the supply side, but so that's a fun little thing. Capital call loans, aka asset backed securitization. Uh, the capital call loans are inside of that big old bond tranche, and uh, that's the stuff could be the next big old thing that blows up but at this point if it's in the wall street journal it's probably either gonna blow up or it's nothing probably a bunch of bluff to me <laughs> <laughs> i want to keep buying those bonds. <laughs> nothing uh, could go wrong yeah they are the, there's also a bunch of they've been trying to like put all these private credit stuff in the edfs etf so people can buy it on the retail side to make it a little bit more liquid. Oh, of course. <laughs> of uh, course, let the little guy. Let the little guy supply the liquidity. Try on it, dude. Oh, Jesus uh-huh. Christ. But me, I've been working in a factory for 45 goddamn <laughs> years, all right? And my pension's not great. But I would be devastated if something took it down. Like NVIDIA. <laughs> Last month, also, Goldman only sold like 400 million of it. Uh, which I'm not positive of comparison, but doesn't seem that big apple is ripe to cut that partnership <laughs> with goldman <laughs> there's something in the water something more of that yeah eh. tim knows am maybe. i am i michael burry because i were <laughs> read a newspaper maybe dude i don't know the goldman sachs ceo was at diddy parties probably you know the gold okay goldman sachs ceo was a dj david solomon he needs to get back on the decks dude it, is it a coincidence that ever since he stopped DJing, the stock went directly up after a long consolidation? Maybe. Probably, yeah. Probably not, though, because he's spinning sick tunes, dude. It, it, nice. Investors love a focus CEO. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of a focus CEO, you hear about the former CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you mean all the naked photos in every Abercrombie and Fitch store? Oh, was it Abercrombie stuff. and Fitch or was it American Apparel? It was, it was Abercrombie and Fitch, which I'm pretty sure has a like killer stock. Let me see. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, he had a gay sex trafficking ring. 
Oh, baby. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't have to mention that it was gay, but. Uh, uh, but yeah. We're, we're a couple decades off from mentioning it. Yeah, he was just getting a mailed in. You know, just. Mailed in. Is that a pun because of males? Whoa, dude. Uh, the Chester. Apple Calvary and Fitch. Oh, ho, 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 just the face ripping good ever since 2023, dude. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. It's doing well. Uh, yeah. All it took is about 24 years, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's doing well. Wow. I'm surprised. Uh, yeah. It was a weird thing. I saw someone was like, if people just, <laughs> if it was facetious, but if people bought, all of their middle school preteen stuff and held it for 20 years, they'd be very rich. Um, this little baby, whether it had a weird sex trafficking CEO or not, it one objectively has gone up from October 22 all the way to the tippy top of April 2024, 1,135%. Who the fuck is buying Abercrombie and Fitch? <laughs> um, I didn't look into it. I'm not sure why it absolutely blew face. Are they killing it on fucking online sales or something? Uh, I'm trying to read. If if we did get the chat bot, chat, why is it? I could, I could probably do that. Ask chat TBT. Uh, but if it's integrated into a podcast, it would be better. Because it's like if you had bought it in 2008, there's up until 2022, you made no money. <laughs> you lost a lot. Well, 2008 specifically, uh, 2008 would be a uh, at the end of 2008, wonderful time to buy. Uh, it would for sure, no one in their right mind would ever hold it for that long from 2008 to now. But if you did, you're richer. I want to know what changed. I'm asking ChatGPT. Why did Abercrombie and Fitch stock rocket? And so what we got here, there's no voice on desktop, is there, for ChatGPT? Um, I don't think so. Uh, it's a strong earnings growth, whatever nerd, uh, increased revenue forecasts, blah, blah, blah. Company has benefited from high consumer demand, particularly for Abercrombie brands. Financial, it probably just did new numbers. Maybe cyclical Gen Z kids buying it. Uh, let's try to find these financial specifics. Why don't we? I need to know why so, Abercrombie and Fitch. We're going to be looking at um, a little something called net income. And I'd like to look at it annually, if I could do that. Is that okay? Chat? Is that okay, chat? Is that okay, chat? <laughs> I thought you know you're a little bit older <laughs> when you're making fun of people calling chat. Um, I wish so... I had thought of that. <laughs> what? It's calling the audience chat. Yeah. It's it's not chat because it's not live streaming. But anyways, uh, 2023, year over year. Net income rose eleven thousand percent. So, I gotta know. Uh, we're talking. Did they switch to China or something like from American manufacturing? Twenty seventeen. This is all net income. Seven million. Um, eighteen seventy four. Twenty nineteen. Thirty nine. Twenty twenty. Negative one hundred fourteen. Uh, that could be a 2020 thing, but still pretty bad. 2021, 263 mil. 2022, 2 million. Really bad. And then 2023, 328 million. Uh, Those are insane numbers for close. 680. Uh, that's a lot of ups and downs and a, and a really big up. Could it be the short of a lifetime, Bonjen? Your thoughts? Uh, I would not touch this. Sh- 
stock because uh, we can't even short. figure out why we can't we can't even figure out why it went up a <laughs> million could, percent I so why Google, would i bet i could on google two things and then chat gbt won't tell me but did they switch ceos did they i'm working on the fly dude um he was arrested for sex jamie trafficking. i mean that's i mean that's pretty but this was um, this growth right? was after he st- after he wasn't ceo anymore didn't he just get fired no, he was only CEO until like 2012. Oh, so it's just a random Abercrombie guy? Yeah, well, he's the former CEO. He might be the founder. Uh, well, let's take a look. Just a little live Abercrombie and Fitch deep dive. Did Amazon buy them? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, oh my God, when was this? What, dude? Oh my goodness. All right. Any any analyst that has been in retail has probably looked at this, but they were founded in what year, Bon Jen? Uh, if I have to guess, nineteen ninety two. Just go back a hundred years, eighteen ninety two. That's crazy. Eighteen ninety two, one hundred thirty two years ago, by the boy himself. They call him Big Crombie, David T. Abercrombie. But what about Fitch? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fitch. His sidekick. His co-founder. <laughs> uh, founder of the American Lifestyle brand. He was a topographer. Good Not name. a lot of topographers. is the study of features of land. And an expert in the outdoors, Abercrombie opened the company as a New York's outfitter for the elite. Good uh, price. First of all, dumb brand name. That's like us calling something Ricker and Bond. <laughs> Back stupid. in the day, they wanted to front. They wanted to flex on you. They say, hey, this is who we are, and you're going to buy our name, dude. They still do it mm-hmm. now. They do it with a lot of financial companies. They did it with, you know. Naked guys outside of their stores. <laughs> David would be rolling in his grave if he saw these chiseled young men on his malls. Okay. Uh, he made clothes for the elite, later partnered with Mr. Ezra Fitch, which was a real estate developer and hobbyist outdoorsman. They seemed to be like uh, well-off folks back in... Back in New York in the 1800s, just doing little colonial stuff here and there, you know. Real I say, estate. Fitch. <laughs> I say, Fitch, please help me develop my, my genes <laughs> up, in, up in lower town Manhattan. Fitch, you, see, you seen these raggedy cats on Wall Street, bro? They don't look good. We've been raking it in over, <laughs> over with real estate in Maryland. I've been killing it in uh, what they call the topography game. Do you want to make some freaking clothes, dude? We gotta uh, dress these clowns. Let's 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 freaking tell them how to look. Um, they managed the company throughout the great years of success. Clothing brand brand. His name was released by the company. Anyways, that's Mr. Abercrombie and his founder, co-founder Ezra Fitch. Was founded in Manhattan. Its headquarters is in Ohio. Its revenue as of 2021, we said all the revenues, net income, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what was I looking up? <laughs> Something about Abercrombie. Yeah, yeah. And then their big brother, Old Navy, came in. Anyways, uh, they made Hollister, Gilly Hicks. Everybody knows Gilly Hicks. These Ooh. guys were just freaking wealthy lawyers, real estate, and, uh, Ezra bought a significant stake in it. David founded it. Incorporated. Fitch eventually bought out Abercrombie shares, becoming its sole owner from 1907 to 1928. And he was like, fuck it, I'll keep the name. Yeah, I mean, by that time, it was probably booming. That's a good 30, 20 years. It, uh, we're talking such lofty names as uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, you seen you seen Teddy Roosevelt in the safari, hunting lions. Who do you think was supplying the drip on Mister T Rose? Fitch, that's right. Got the presidential probably, drip, dude. Probably Fitch. It was precisely him. Uh, what a name. Hemingway was a regular customer. They were just the <laughs> Roosevelt, Hemingway, and Selena Gomez. <laughs> Um, three icons. Yeah, they uh, bought several heavy guns and uh, 
on consignment with the company. So it, it hilariously goes from the history of the 1800s um, and then just skips to the 70s. It goes from 1928 to the 70s. Uh, after a brutal war. <laughs> after, after Fitch just absolutely went haywire on the Philippines, brandishing guns himself with his wife. All the way up into the 70s. 70s, they went bankrupt. Uh, it was on Madison Avenue. <laughs> they did stuff. Uh, why is it going freaking just crazy brazy? Did it become a stock? I mean, a meme stock? Uh, even if it did, I mean, there has to be at least like four things behind it. It's got to be something. Maybe they just had record earnings. Maybe Gen Z was like, fuck Amazon. We're going to go to the mall. We're going to go to the pool again. <laughs> We're gonna buy um, these jeans. Uh, let me try to find some. This, I mean, this is just—it's at the end. No one's Fitch. I can't even type in Fitch, dude. My goodness. The fuck? What is their ticker? They only—they only, they only uh, went public back in '97 or so. A and F. Okay, literally not there. Uh, yeah, deep dive on Abercrombie next episode, and then also deep dive on Intuit data infrastructure. I gotta know where my face is going, <laughs> Steve. Oh, driving my Microsoft into the ground. Now you're gonna drive my face into the ground. The Wall Street Journal has news on. Ah, here we go. It's a video, so I do you just want to hear the video? It's not yeah. Good. good nine minute video. Nah, just play like thirty seconds. Okay. Let me just get a uh it's gonna be ten seconds of this Tums Amazon commercial, which is very interesting, but I cannot click the prime thing. Anyways, uh this is Ricker, this is Vaughn, and this is the Wall Street Journal. In the early two thousands, nearly every teenager knew the name. It was all about our Abercrombie & Fitch logo, and the company was on fire. Things were going up and up and up. But then, those sales started to move in the other direction. In 06. Abercrombie & Fitch is learning the hard way that sex doesn't always sell. Abercrombie... Oh, so someone was selling it. Yeah. Get it? His name is Tim Apple. No. He faced oh. rising fast fashion Allegedly competition and mounting lawsuits over discrimination. And the CEO who built the company's exclusive image. So this is uh, tired abruptly. He, Mike Jeffries, who is the man who got caught up. Yes, he is. So Jeffrey retired out of nowhere, just like we said. What happened if uh, Mr. Tim Cook did in 2014? And by this time, Abercrombie and Fitch. Stock was literally like almost at the low either way. Yeah, 06, 07, it just went bad all the way down ski. And everyone was left thinking, well, maybe that was the end of Abercrombie and Fitch. But Abercrombie's team began wondering, who could it convince to buy the brand again? I just knew that the Abercrombie adult brand had a huge opportunity. Here is the case study on how Abercrombie went against industry standards, abandoned its teenage consumer, and aged up. First, Single moms. The company had to distance itself okay, from its I'm former a bit. 20. It also canceled clothing orders with its supplier, which effectively struck its stockpile down 7% from the year prior. And as the I'm sorry, I can't I can't do a magazine style video. <laughs> Yeah, what is this BuzzFeed in 2017? Yeah. What the fuck? Mr. Paul Tudor Jones has has wise words. The most important thing in business is communicating, and he hates magazine style memos, dude. I'm not trying to get entertained. I'm trying to know how they made money. They probably freaking stopped trying to sell to teenagers and did adults or something. Yeah, um, they stopped sex trafficking young men in front of their stores. Okay, <laughs> what else is going on? Let's move on. Disney CEO new 2026. How can they recover from the horrible decision to replace Bob? I don't know if it's a horrible decision. He's pretty old. 
Bob Iger was CEO up until uh, 2019, 2020, stopped, stepped down. The head of former head of Disney Parks, Bob Chappick, stepped up to the plate, took that stock all the way down. Um, Bob Bobby I had to step back in. And uh, now Disney's struggling a little bit. Um, and the thing is, is that Bob is like 73 years old. So he needs to uh, find a successor. Um, they're looking at 2026. Apparently they're looking internally as well as externally, but mostly internally. So we shall see because Netflix is kind of kicking ass in the, the media department. Um, Disney, the fuck? got a little bit of an activist investor in there stock price is at 2016 levels from a high in 2021 uh no it's at like yeah not looking good stock wise which usually tells a nice little fundamental picture of a company which is interesting because their parks are kicking ass they raise prices even though they're fucking crowded as shit people are still going to that shit um they had a pretty good year for movies, I think. Fucking Inside Out 2 did over a billion. Um, they had another one that did really well. I like Inside Out 2. I didn't see Inside Out 1. I saw Inside Out 2 in theaters, and it really made me uh, explicitly in touch with what I was feeling as a human. Really? I thought it was all right. I like the first one more. I didn't see the first one. But uh, looking, they had another movie, too, that like did good. Was it? Was there like an Avengers movie or something this year? Maybe a Doctor Strange. Oh, maybe it was fucking um, Deadpool that did well. And X Men. Yeah. Or not X Men and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine. Bought now. So like the, they have a proven strategy of just making sequels, just like makes money. So. Well, here's the thing. Overall, uh, annually that net margin not looking great. Twenty twenty two net margin. We're only talking about a number of 3.8%. 2023, 2%. Quarterly, 11% in this last quarter. Before that, barely just under break even. So, not wonderful as far as net margin percent is. Uh, not great. Not, not, no. not great. What can they do? You're the CEO of Disney. What do you do? Well, Keep I'm in mind, chairman. 70 percent of your money right now is coming from your parks. I just went to a Clippers game. I'm putting Bomber in the seat. That's right. Call me crazy. Did he screw Microsoft for over a decade? Yes. But have you seen the toilets and into a dome? My um, Bomber as CEO of Disney. Yeah. Redo what the bathrooms. What if they added that face shit to Disney? Could be something. But like, you know, like that make more money. They just make it easy. Yeah, dude. They make it easier, less friction, oh. bro. It was so easy to spend money and into it, bro. Oh, you just fucking Disney pick shit off the fucking shelves and leave. You don't have to wait in line and think about, oh, do I really need the $60 Mickey Mouse shirt? You know, you just take it and put it on and leave. And right. then it just it gets added to your fucking and you don't even see it until you leave the park at the end of the day. And you see you spent $400 <laughs> on top of your ticket. And they just like added that to all the restaurants and shit. That would be crazy. I don't know. So that's more data to sell. They could they could love selling data over here at Rick and Bond. Um I'm trying to see what makes them money. Um, um I think um, uh, Disney Plus is profitable finally, but it's not like the parks. We're looking at entertainment, experience, sports. Media, entertainment, and distribution, parks, media networks, D2C, studio entertainment, parks and resorts, consumer products. Some of these revenues, some years are not, uh, don't have any reporting. Because they're uh, low? Is it the fucking cable networks? Is it ABC, ESPN? There's just some, I'm on trading view. I'm on trading view. Some years. If I were CEO, I would sell those stats. Um, the most there, it also differs from year to year. Um, wow. Interesting. Uh, in 2023, their biggest was entertainment, which encompasses something. 
uh, probably movies. It made forty billion. Is that sounding movie ish? Yeah, if it was like a fucking Avengers year or something. Twenty twenty three. Um, twenty twenty three. Experiences, which is not Disney parks and experiences and products. Uh, got thirty two bill, and then sports got sixteen billion. Uh, the rest of the years those weren't reported. So I'm um, maybe they just consolidated. How did consolidated how they report their revenues? Uh, that's seeming likely. Media networks might be Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution Experiences is probably Park Sports is ESPN Entertainment is Studio and Media stuff. I'm assuming. Um, so, entertainment does the most. Experience, second most. Sports is the least. For a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, about ninety billion dollars in 2023. What's Ooh. bleeding? What's bleeding? Though? Oh, I already asked you. Who would you who would you put on there? You saw bombers in the bathroom. Um, I don't have a roster of CEOs like that. It would be I, I should I should uh... I would not put Balmer. But like like you maybe not a CEO, but like maybe a company. Like would you put like uh, you know, fucking YouTube on there? Disney's or some shit? weird, man. Disney's weird. Disney's weird, yeah. I feel like it needs to be internal. Cause they get the culture. But the sure. last hire was internal and that didn't go well. Maybe they know too much. Maybe you got to get a little aggro with it and be like, yo, why do you guys, why do you own ESPN? <laughs> yeah. Um, if like, it, I think if they, they should just focus on everything exclusively, like fucking family and kids. Yeah. I mean, maybe Hulu has like an insurance policy against like adult streaming, but or movies and stuff. Yeah. They got video I mean, games and in, shit. In terms of res. Uh, in terms of revenue, it doesn't... Okay, they also report it weird, but it doesn't seem like they're hello all over the place. I mean, yes, they are. Sports experiences, parks. You can't really get rid of a park, even though you, Disney that, parks. You need the parks. Dude, their reporting is annoying. And their park... Because well, Netflix can't make a park, probably. I'm assuming experiences is parks and maybe like one other thing. That's most of it. Entertainment, movies, most of it. What? Uh... What is Disney? Oh, oh, Amazon owns MGM. What if they just bought Six Flags and just made like just go all the of... parks? Just go yeah. for parks all the time. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> buy rundown parks. I mean, Six Flags ain't bad rundown. No, but you find random parks around town, <laughs> and, oh, you yeah. go, and you go super micro park. Netflix is opening cafes or something. Like that. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure you want. To, I mean, you're already in the food business at the parks. Yeah. You get in Chipotle, CEO. 